My name is Corey and I have five children. Um, my oldest son is 21 and lives outside the home and then I have a 12 year old, 7 year old, 6 year old and 2 year old. The 6, 7 and 12 are all participating in classical conversations. My 2 year old uh, attends childcare there so she's participating just not in foundations yet. And we've been homeschooling for four years. We've been in CC for two. Now you're about to explain this super ninja planning system you got here. Why did you come up with this? Um, I initially started the year with two planners. I had my personal planner and then I had a teacher lesson planner um, that I was able to kind of hijack and make into work for homeschool. It was a traditional teacher planner for like school, public school, and I was able to kind of make it work. The problem was I had two books and I have four kids at home and I would forget one book or fill in one book and not fill in the other book or it was just a mess. So I um, started searching on YouTube, which is what we all do nowadays, and I was looking for planner videos and I found um, these inserts called uh, DIY Fish and it's a shop on Etsy and it's a girl named uh, Shane Chen who everybody calls Fish. Um, she is in Singapore of all places and she designs these amazing sheets and you can mix and match and different layouts and put it together and it allowed me to spend about the same amount of money and create one book that holds everything um, wife, mom, school, director because I am a director this year um, everything is in this one book and I'm able to print my and I print them so if I make a mistake I can print another page which is incredibly important um, and I can also um, be as detailed as I need to be or be as undetailed as I need to be depending on what's going on and it allows me to print like all the monthly calendars so I can forward plan if I need to I don't have to um, it's really flexible it allows me to do exactly what I need and based on all the YouTube planning videos that you've researched are there many homeschool planning videos that you no, found there's like zero occasionally you'll find homeschool moms that that vlog I think is the term and they'll occasionally talk about their day but it's very specific to their day and they don't always talk about their curriculum or their schedule. Some people do, some people don't. But there was nothing of a planner video that was homeschool specific that I found. These are the DIY fish inserts I was talking about. This is her yearly calendar. Um, I did the stamps and the washi tape, but this is how it comes. This stuff's printed. So when you get it, you have um, 2018, 2017 on the side. You also have a list. Um, I don't have a lot of yearly things but you can um, put in whatever you have plans for the year, goals, New Year's resolutions, anything like that. Then you can flip it open and here it divides each month into three sections and I personally just made this birthdays, anniversaries, track them that way. Then when you open it this way, and I'll show both sides, it breaks down each month so I've got, you know, when we're going to the dentist, um, my husband's deployment, not a whole lot on this side of the year yet. That's what this is for. So it's really great for forward planning. And then you have these monthly calendars. And this is October and November, but I'm going to flip into December. Again, I decorated this myself, and I wrote in things I wanted to finish for the month. And with DIY Fish, you have something called a monthly chart, which this allows you to check these things off and keep track of them. So I try to change my air filters. Um, Sasha is our dog, making sure her meds and her bedding gets washed once a month. Things like that. Just a, an, an overview for the month of a way to make sure things are going. I've also tracked um, when families are arriving for the holidays, things like that. But you can really use these for anything you want them to be. This is just how I'm using them. When you flip it over this way, this is your month. And I know it's small, but it's also vertical. So this is all Mondays. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, so on, and the week goes this way. So each of these color are washi, um, washi tapes, thin washi tape. I color code everything in my life. So this is our community day for challenge. It's dark purple when everybody's meeting, but light purple because it's just challenge these two weeks. Um, this is uh, play dates that we go, a play date that we go on each week. My son Henry is green, and this is his karate class. This is our church activities music lessons, my daughter's ballet, and my daughter's class at the Little Gym, and then church. Okay, so you have activities color-coded and your children color-coded. Yes, everything is color-coded. So these, this washi that I had that was purple and white, because purple is challenge, or community, uh, sorry, classical conversations for me, this is our Christmas break. 
So this means we have no classes and all of our activities are suspended except for Sunday morning church. And then I use this section right here for birthdays for that month and of course Christmas. But I made it that section. You could make it anything you wanted it to be. If you were tracking husband traveling, um, work schedule, if you have an at-home business, I mean, it could be for anything. And then on this page, I do um, just general notes for the month. Um, I need to, you know, stamp my bill trackers for the upcoming month. I have a little calendar sticker here that I got off Etsy that's January. So just so I can see dates if I need them. Um, and then I got these from uh, So Much Crafting Inserts, another Etsy shop. But I put, um, on the other side, my bills are filled in. So we're going to do the blank side. Um, this is just the bills for the month, and I keep track of the amounts and then check them off when I pay them. And that way, at the end of the year, I just have a record of everything, and I don't have to search through the computer if I don't want to, because we do pay everything online. Um, and then I'm going to turn to this current week, and then this is the si part of the system that I really fell in love with, is when you come to your week, it is folded like this. So you can put... Um, a quote or what's important that week that you're going to be doing, any important tasks you want to get done. It's a way to forward plan. So if there was something on here like um, Little Jim isn't going to meet this week, I would write it here so that when I get to my week and plan, I see it and I can go, oh, I don't have to put that in on my day that week. Um, these are stamps that I found on Etsy as well that represent my kids. Um, I did not draw these. That's why I'm pointing that out. And it goes and it tells you each week and it gives you the dates up here so you can find your week, what you're looking for very quickly. And then I put a washi tape just to make it a little easier. So when you flip it open and you plan your week, it matches up. So these are all Mondays. So on Monday, I know that I know that I have um, challenge. So I have a little schoolhouse. I'm going grocery shopping on Mondays. Um, I do my summary email on Monday nights. Um, these are my icons for my kids' homeschool because I have one who's in seventh grade and one who's little, uh, or two who are little, sorry. I keep track. We school four days a week, so I keep track of doing that. These hearts are color-coded for the activities like I showed you guys over here. We go to church on Wednesday nights. We go to church on Sunday, and, you know, my trash, when my trash goes out, things like that. These are just things I put on here are things that happen every single week. Um, and this is the only place that they tend to show up. I don't write them every single day. It's just here so that I can look and go, okay, this is what's going on this week. Nothing's changed in our regular weekly schedule. And then the other thing that I really liked, the, what I've shown you so far is DIY Fish's A5 version, version 2.2, um, and it's two, day, two pages per day. But I also added version 3.2 for weeklies to include as lesson plans, and that's what I'm going to show you next. And I'll, I'll show you which ones are different. So when I come here, um, this is part of the 2.2 the version, and the outlines were all there. I added these little lines on the inside and the text. And I was able to do that with uh, um, Adobe or Preview, a PDF reader. I personally use Mac, so I use Preview. And I was able to edit. So these pictures are, are stamps. They're just stamps I found that, that for me represent the classes that I'm teaching my kids. Um, and then I handwrite what we're going to do for the week. Then down here I track um, instruments. Three of my kids play instruments, so I track that they practice and all that kind of good stuff. And then when Foundations is in session, we have presentations every week. So I keep my younger kids' uh, topics here so that I remember to prepare them for their for their topic. So the big thing that we write here is generally what I want to accomplish that week and it's flexible. This is the routine that we use. So the goal is to try and get as much of this done as possible. If I don't get it done, it moves to the next week or if it's something that maybe isn't that important, we skip. And then on this page is where I track specific notes for my kids and these are for foundations specifically. This is part of the version 3.2 that I was talking about. So they give you a small weekly checklist and I just track where we able to accomplish and as you can see not everything is checked in every day. We had some things that we missed and then I try to put a couple notes over here. For example, Foundations is on break so for our memory work and our notebooking, the kids have been going back and doing activities in the first 12 weeks that they didn't get to. So we're just kind of still reinforcing what they learned this semester, but 
this is they just pick what they want to do out of the books this week with if we were in a specific week then they would have to do a specific week's work but right now they just get to pick what they want to do we use handwriting without tears um, so they did their handwriting worksheets we also do copy work from the Bible I'm um, using uh, we participate in Awana so that's where they get their Bible verses that they work on so trying to tie things in so that they're not doing work upon work upon work I try to make things fit together. Here, everything is just listed, all of the subjects that we do, so that I don't forget anything. This is the their pages that they're supposed to do this week. These are the chapters. Um, for Latin, we do Song School Latin. So we're just kind of working through it slowly. It's just a kind of a, it's a really fun little program, and the kids enjoy learning it and watching the videos that come with the the work that they're doing and it's really just kind of helping them figure out that all those little Latin songs they're learning in foundations actually goes to a language and it's not just a song they're learning um, so it's something we incorporated this year I didn't do it last year but I've started doing that probably also influenced by starting challenge that I think they need I want them to have a little bit more of exposure to Latin this for reading um, they're working through lesson five we use all about reading so we're in daily, I want them to go through their cards and reading books every day. So we're working on that. Math, we use Saxon. Um, and these are just the lessons we're wanting to do this week. And that's really everything on that page. So then this next page is, again, this is part of the 3.2. And this is my page for, I t I'm a director for Challenge A. So this is what I do each week with my kids in class. So my goal is um, we meet on Mondays. But I don't use the calendar for this. This is just, I just use the design so that I can write down what I want to do in divided blocks. So my goal is to prep each of these strands or subjects each week before we go to seminar on Mondays. So this is Latin, this is math, this is composition, research, rhetoric, and geography or debate. So I just use the stamps because it, I know what they mean. <laughs> And then up here, every week, I do a summary email after class. Um, I do a notebook check for my, my son. And on, in my class, I spot grade three strands. The boys don't know what strand I'm going to look at that week, but I try to just give them a little bit of accountability um, and, I, and also to give me an idea if I'm going too fast, I'm going too slow, they need more help in something. Because especially 12-year-old boys don't tend to always ask questions when they really need to. So this is a way for me just to kind of check that. Um, it's really random. It's a spot check kind of thing. I'm not assigning grades and giving them. I'm just kind of assessing, are we at a good speed or do I need to go faster or slower? Um, and then for that week, this just gives me ideas of, for example, we're prepping for Blue Books. So these are my ideas for Blue Book questions. These are topics that are coming up for the week that I need to make sure I tell the boys about. Um, and that's really all this one is just because we're prepping for our blue books next week. And my goal every week on Sunday is a day of rest. I don't want to be doing anything in preparation. I should be done by Saturday at the latest. And typically I spend maybe an hour to an hour and a half depending on what subject it is prepping. So, and I think that's maybe two to three nights a week, maybe four if it's a really rough week. Um, or it's stuff I'm unfamiliar with <laughs> that I need to remember. Um, on this page, I keep track um, of the what assignments were turned in. Um, I just keep a, I just keep a rough list. Did they complete all their work that week? Was anything going on at home? It also just kind of gives me an idea if there's any kind of problems or things I need to be aware of. Um, and what you know what was forgotten? Um, did they finish something? Did they not finish something? Um, and then here we do some specific assignments. The boys usually pick um, what their next topic in science is going to be or what their paper is going to be on. If they've done um, for Lost Tools of Writing, they have to pick an issue. So I try to make sure they're not writing the same issue. So I'll make notes on that um, just for myself. Um, these were just notes of things I wanted to make sure I went over in class. And then for this little checklist here, which is the same checklist I used over here, um, it's just what I need to prep and I check it off when I've prepped it so I can look and say oh shoot I haven't come up with something and I need to make sure I get that done I usually look at this I look at this every day but really on Fridays so that I know if I need to get anything done on Saturday for class before Monday um, and that's this and then on this side 
um, is just a personal sheet for me. I When I do my Bible study, I just track Bible verses or quotes that speak to me. And then this is a weekly chart, and this is part of Fish's um, pages. And you, again, I typed this in myself, but the, the actual chart is hers. Um, and it's just what I, what I need to do every day, um, making sure I'm keeping on track with things. Sometimes I do it and I don't check it off, but I try to remember to check things off so that I can go, oh yes, I, I did vacuum the living room this week and I did remember to take the trash out and keeping track of things that way. Um, it also kind of just gives me a way to look back and see how my week went. Sometimes you don't have time to do that. So this is a very, I can look at one sheet and I can know how my week's going. When you flip into this, and this is where I get creative and I decorate, this is my day. So here, the, the, count, the clock actually goes from 1 a.m. to 12 a.m. So it's the entire 24 hours. And what I personally do is I mark off because I'm never up before 5 a.m. So this is where I decorate. Um, for fun. We had a birthday to celebrate, so I mark that. And then I mark a checkbox so that when I've wished her that birthday, I am able to check it off. And th on this day, we had um, Challenge A for the day. So purple, which is my color for challenge, um, it starts at 8.30 and it goes until 3. And so I have a line and just wrote in what it is. Um, we decided to watch Elf as a family that night and have hot chocolate. So that's there. This is my personal checklist. And then this is just decorating for fun. These are stamps. Um, and just tracking, I do track the weather, water, you know, did I go to the grocery store? This is how I track um, when we get to speak to my husband. He's currently deployed right now, so we keep track of when we get to talk to him. And then on this second page is more of a personal notes page. And I will show this one over here because it's blank. And you get one of these each day of the week. I personally use it as a journal, but you could really use it for anything. It could be, you could draw layouts for your house if you're rearranging furniture. You can really do everything because it's got graph paper. And this little thing here is called an LM Hyperdex. And it's basi basically a visual time tracking tool. It's a 24 hour clock and you color code or decide what colors represent things to you. And you can track things you're doing that day. Um, on this particular one, which is for today, it's not filled out all the way yet, but um, this is my kids circle and they went, to, this is for when they slept last night going into today. And then when I slept, this is my husband's circle and then activities that have happened today. I typically fill this in at night after I've done my journal and it just allows me to flip back and see what kind of day I had without having to read everything. I can look and see, oh wow, you know, Thursday was particularly rough, you know, what was going on. Um, oh, Wednesday we were really busy, that's why we didn't get as much stuff checked off. It's just a way to do, look at it very quickly and not have to read and read and try to figure out exactly what happened that day. Um, these pages go through um, Monday through Sunday and again, you can design them and draw and art or do nothing and just handwrite. Um, a lot of people just do this and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. This one's a little bit more decorated. This one's way decorated. And then this is Friday and I mailed my Christmas cards and I meal plan tonight and you know that kind of stuff. Um, I noted here that my daughter's class is going to change so I've got it written down somewhere. And it goes all the way through the week and then on Sunday you have your two pages. Then it closes, and I personally just use this page. I put pictures here. I put notes about things that happen with the kids, anything in general. And then it folds again, and I have my week all bundled together. So it allows me to track everything in one book. Here's the next week, and the whole process starts over. One of the things I was going to do is I'm going to flip to January because they're completely blank. And that way you can kind of see what we have here. So this is January's, and the fish made some changes, but they're very minor. So when you flip into your first week, you know, it's blank, and now there's not a little checklist anymore, but you could still make one. And then this is what a blank sheet looks like for me. So there would just be no text on the actual one, and these little lines here wouldn't be here. But this is what a blank week looks like. And then here's the weekly chart. Now I put the text in, but everything else, it, the chart itself would be there. And she's colored it this year. Now it's in color. My other 
My other lesson plan pages aren't in here. But this is what, I put some washi down just because I had some left over, but this is what blank pages look like. So you can really create it and make it into anything you want it to be and however it's useful for you. And let me go back to the lesson plan so you guys can look at those one more time. So basically, this sheet is, this is all handwritten, but these lines are here, and this stuff here I did. So it's a blank rectangle basically, and I just created and added those things in. The chart was there, and then this is, all the lines are here, I just added the stamps and handwriting. In. So that's what my blank lesson plan, and like I said, these two pages are actually part of the 3.2 version. So it's an add-on that I added so that I could actually have a separate lesson plan for my older son, and I really liked having these checklists for the kids. So now I didn't have to have a checklist in my checklist, I have one specific for that. But that is my, that is my system, and it allows me to kind of track everything in life that I need to track. This is another insert from um, So Much Crafting, and I put these in just to keep track of what meals we're eating. And then you also have a little sheet on the back. You can add your grocery list. And if you do your holes and you cut little slits in them, you can pull it out of your planner and take it into the store with you or put it in a different book. You don't have to take this into the grocery store with you. But those are my planning tools, I guess is the best word. And it just allows me to keep track of everything in one place.